Hi, 8th grade. Welcome to lesson 6-5, Understand Congruent Figures. By the end of the lesson, I want you to be able to say, I can use a sequence of translations, reflections, and rotations to show that figures are congruent. Solve and discuss it. Simone plays a video game in which she moves shapes into empty spaces. After several rounds, her next move must fit the blue piece into the dashed space. How can Simone move the blue piece to fit in the space? Okay, so have you ever played Tetris? It is a game where you're trying to fit all the blocks in a row. So like this row, since they're all there, this row would cancel out. You don't want the whole thing to fill up. So if Simone was to, well, let's hear some participation. Okay, my thought was Simone could rotate it 90 degrees so that it would look like this. And then if she moved it, so rotate 90 degrees. And then if she moved it, translate, let's work on those words, even I need to, instead of move, translate two to the right, it would be here, translate to right, and let's see, one, two, three, four, oops, different color, four down. And it would perfectly fit right in this spot. And we just need something over here to cancel out that second row. Okay, focus on math practices. How do you know that a piece fits into the same space as, sorry, how do you know that the piece that fits into this space is the same as the original blue piece? Explain. It is the same size and shape. So the piece fits perfectly in. Okay, number... Example number one, understand congruence. Ava wants to place a flame-resistant hearth rug in front of the fireplace that is the same size and shape as the rug in front of the sofa. How can she determine whether the rugs are the same size and shape? If a sequence of translations, reflections, and rotations maps one rug onto the other, then the rugs are the same size and shape. Congruent figures have the same size and shape. So that's one of your vocab words. Oh, why do I always do that? Not sure where that cut off. Um, I'm just going to start reading the definition again. Congruent figures have the same size and shape. Two-dimensional figures are congruent. This is the symbol for congruent. It's an equal sign with a tilde on the top or squiggly. If the second figure can be obtained from the first by a sequence of rotations, reflections, and translations. So we see that she's going to take the rug and she's going to translate it to the right and then rotate clockwise. So Ava uses a translation followed by a rotation to map the living room rug onto the hearth rug. They are the same size and shape. That means they are congruent rugs. They are equal rugs. There's no overlapping. One isn't bigger than the other. Um, and they're both rectangles, so they're congruent. Let's try it. How can you determine whether the orange and a blue rectangles are congruent? Well, we can look at their size and the shape. They're both rectangles, and this has a width of 4 and a length of 5. This rectangle has a width of 5 and a length of 4. So they are the same size and the same shape. That tells me that we can use a sequence of translations to move one onto the other. So we would use a rotation and a translation. Quadrilateral PQRS is congruent to quadrilateral P prime, Q prime, R prime, S prime. What do you know about these figures? Oh, what do you know how what do you know about how these figures relate? I know since they're congruent, again, they have the same size and the same shape. And a sequence, remember sequence was more than one, a sequence of transformations, a sequence of transformations 
maps one onto the other. So you'll be able to move one of the, you can move the quadrilateral PQRS in some way with a form of rotation, reflection, and translation in order to lay right on top of P prime, Q prime, R prime, S prime. Okay, example number two. Identify congruent figures. Is quadrilateral ABCD congruent to quadrilateral QRST? Okay, so the first thing we wanna, I want to mention is that the first letter should line up with the first letter. So I want A and Q to line up with each other. Then the second letter and the second letter, so that means B and R should line up with each other. Um, following that pattern, C and S. And D and T. So that might be obvious with these figures because they're so oblong, but sometimes it's not as obvious with a square or a rectangle. So the first step is they're reflecting quadrilateral across the line x equals 1. Remember, x equals 1 is the line that intersects the x-axis at 1. So flipping that over this line gives us this figure here. Then we can see, okay, A is at the top, A is at the top. Like everything's facing the same way. We just need to move it. And instead of move, I should say translate. Three to the right and two down. Since quadrilateral ABCD maps onto quadrilateral QRST, quadrilateral ABCD is congruent to quadrilateral QRST. You probably could have told that by inspection. You would see that, yes, it's the same size and the same shape, but that is not enough of a definition of congruent um, to be worth full credit. To be worth full credit, you'd have to say, yes, there's the sequence of transformations that maps one onto the other. Those transformations are a reflection and a translation. Part B, is ABC congruent to JKL? So again, A would be on J, K would be with B, and C would be with L. Reads in order. So I can already see that there's going to have to be some sort of rotation. So you can start by mapping one vertex to its corresponding vertex. So they're going to translate first. They're going to map C onto L because they should be touching each other. Then rotating JKL about point L so that side LK aligns with CB. Uh-oh. Does it line up? No. They cannot be mapped on top of one another using a sequence of transformations so they are not congruent. Are these figures congruent? Explain. Well, I can see that the top of this should be on the top of that. So I am going to translate three to the right and four down. Let me write down what I do. Translate three right and four down. When I do that, my new figure is going to look like this. There over to, okay, so I just copied the figure. Now I need to rotate about the, that fixed point, rotate about this point. And when I rotate, seeing how this is straight down, it becomes straight over. This is down one over two, this becomes over two down one, that works. Up one over two, or I'm sorry, up two over one, so then over two down one. It ends up being the same size and the shape, same shape. So yes, a sequence of transformations maps figure one onto figure two. And you would have seen that too by inspection. You could see that these are the same size and the same shape. Key concept. Two-dimensional figures are congruent. Remember this is a symbol for congruent. If there is a sequence of translations, reflections, and rotations that maps one figure onto the other. These rectangles are congruent. They have the same size and shape. 
When comparing two-dimensional figures, the or order of corresponding points in the name of each figure must be the same. Quadrilateral ABCD is congruent to quadrilateral EFGH. That means A should map onto E, B should map onto F, C onto G, and D onto F, so that or D onto H. So that order matters. Okay, eighth grade, let's say it. I can use a sequence of translations, reflections, and rotations to show that figures are congruent. Have a great day.